Hello there, how are you doing today? Uh, you must have heard about that Mozilla controversy. Since I closely monitor the Linux and open source world, there were some folks, so-called advocates uh, of uh, the desktop Linux community, uh, who love controversies. Uh, if stirring a, a pot means more views to their channel, they will do it. It works for them. Polarizing always works. That's the number one strategy of politicians uh, to divide and rule people. Uh, playing with fears and insecurities, I mean, that's a sure shot formula for success. But uh, when you look at the larger picture, it actually hurts everybody. It hurts open source and Linux. So um, coming back to the point of Mozilla, okay, they did a bad thing by injecting Mr. Robot ad. I do like Mr. Robot, though uh, I loved first season, second season, just nosedived, and third season is like walking a very thin line. So I'm not as big a fan as I used to be. Uh, but irrespective of the fact how popular the TV show is or whether it's about privacy or, or you know, internet and all those things, uh, there's no excuse for sneaking uh, an ad into my browser without my permission. Uh, so Mozilla effed up big time. Uh, but the interesting thing is that Mozilla is not the only culprit here. It's, it's becoming a common practice. Uh, just yesterday, I wrote a news item for Linux Pro magazine that Microsoft has enabled a feature in the in Windows 10 where they automatically install suggested apps on user system without notifying them or without seeking their permission. Yes, you heard me right. You leave your Windows 10 system, when you come back, a new application will be installed on it without your intervention. And the problem was that they installed one such app called Keeper, which is a password manager, and there is a known bug in this application that allows a remote hacker or remote attacker to steal credentials from your system, like passwords or credit card information. And that was installed on user system. So we don't even know how many people got affected by it. And that's not just Microsoft. Uh, ever since High Sierra was released, Apple has been leaving stupid bugs in its system, especially around password management. Uh, the latest bug was where, I wrote about it too, where uh, if you have not created a root password for your user, uh, for your system, and most Mac users don't create root password because root is disabled by default. But the problem is that if you do not create a root password, and if you go to system preference or the login screen, and you just type root as a user and you hit the login key a couple of time and you will log into the system as a root user. So you have all the privileges system wide. You can make whatever changes you want throughout the system. With iOS 11, Apple did something similar, which is more or less like a feature thing where when you toggle the Bluetooth or wireless switch off from the pull down menu, it doesn't turn off the wireless chips. It only disables or disconnects from the wireless network, the chip chips are still powered and they can still be connected to whatever network Apple wants or whoever wants it. It's not just Apple. Google was found to be where Android was tracking and sending location data to Google even if users disabled location services. I mean, there are so many stories. I can keep going on and on and on. So it's not an isolated case with Mozilla. And that is why you should not live under the rock in your own world. You should look around what's going on too. But the thing is that uh, uh, recently, Mike Elgin, he's you know, a very prominent writer and I'm a huge fan of him. His, he wrote an article uh, about all these topics and he said that, can we really trust our computers anymore? And that is a big question. I wonder if these are honest mistakes or intentions. What is the motive? Are these companies exhausting users with all these shenanigans so that eventually we will accept these as standard practices and say, hey, oh, yeah, I know these companies do these things all the time. Just the way we have gotten used to whatever Facebook is doing. We don't even know anymore what is tracking, what's not tracking. I don't know how it's playing the game of 
filter bubble and all those things so people will get used to it and the even bigger question is who is going to benefit from it what is the possibility so I, i'm not wearing my uh, any, any tinfoil hat or i'm not a conspiracy theorist but I, I i write science fiction so i do wonder that what could be the motive what is the possibility of you know spy agencies uh, they, i mean just imagine you know they can easily get access to a mac without any backdoor you can they can track your location without any backdoor they can install any app on your windows system without any backdoor they can is, is sneak any piece of code in your browser without any backdoor it's all out there and open so who is going to benefit from it so don't don't look at mozilla what is it's doing don't demonize mozilla look at the larger picture and that's what i think is the case here it's a bigger problem and that problem needs to be at a much higher level demonizing mozilla will not help so you may wonder what is the solution well ideally our government would have intervened by now passing legislations that is stop these companies from such practices it's simple you're not allowed to do install things on user system without their permission just the way you're not allowed to enter my house without my permission and that's where lies the problem there has been systematic efforts to erode our trust in the very government that you choose and that we pay for it's systematic because the so called uh, mainstream media or corporate media i would say uh, has been brainwashing it as that regulations and governments are bad it's systematic because there are a lot of efforts going on that kind of established this notion that regulations and governments are bad people like donald trump are appointing you know people who weaken the very agencies that are meant to 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 regulate industries and protect us to make our lives better trump with with a lot of help from gop has been systematically casting doubts on our agencies would you fly in a plane that doesn't meet any security regulations would you buy a car would you buy an appliance which may electrocute you would you drink water which is not safe will you put your child in a car that doesn't meet safety requirements so yes regulations are good for us it's nonsense notion that regulations are bad so here we are left to our own devices what to do as i said earlier in my opinion one solution to this problem is through legal channel we should be passing laws that is stop these companies from encroaching into our systems let's call for a legislation that makes it illegal for these companies to install any piece of software on our system without our permission no dirty clauses in eula or tos it's plain and simple if you want to install something on my system you need my permission period so and you should you should also think that you know if, even if you don't like the legislation if you look at the larger picture what is happening is that uh, while uh, a lot of re- regulations are being removed these companies continue to retain their own influence and power why should these companies be the only ones to use the legal framework against us with legislations like dmca while our own, uh, while uh, all the legislations and all the regulation that were meant to protect us are being removed i think that we are sliding into a world where companies walk free and people are getting regulated i mean just look at the net neutrality repeal and and a, a lot of other regulations then the trump administration is is re- repealing i think it's a systematic destruction of our well founded system I don't think that's functional democracy that's oligarchy you know and and I think it's it's about time that we start using our legal system our legal option which is to pressure our government that we voted voted for to get such regulations passed though I don't have any 
hopes with the Trump administration and GOP owned Congresses. The, the point is, what will happen to us eventually? Where will we go? What will we become? So if you don't change, things won't improve. What should we change? I think the number one thing that we need to change is that we should stop being polarized and divided. So, so the first thing that we should focus on is that stop supporting all those people, whether in the tech world or in the, in the, in the, the political landscape, who polarize and divide us. If you look deeper, you'll find that despite our disagreements and differences, there are a lot of things that are common across the board. So let's find those common grounds and work together. Let's come together as, as, as Linux, Mac OS, Windows, iOS, Android, BSD users. Let's come together as uh, Republicans or Democrats or conservatives or liberals, you know, find those common grounds and work together to solve issues like these. So once again, let's put aside all that nonsense that divide us, you know, within the tech community and send the right people to government who will fight for our rights and freedom. If we don't, we, if, if we stand divided as Mac OS user, Windows user, uh, Linux user, uh, iOS user, Android user, BSD user, whatever, you will continue to lose one by one. And um, that is not a very good uh, thing for our country. So I think it's about time. We should start looking at these things seriously. We should stop uh, this polarization and division and work together. So that's my opinion about this Mozilla thing because I don't believe it's a small case. It's, it's a very serious problem. Within five or 10 years, if we don't fix it, we will not have any control or freedom of computing. So that's my opinion. Let me know what you think.